Hi guys, welcome to Classic Rock and Country Music Facts and Trivia. I emphasize the word country today because it's on Merle Haggard and you can't get much more country than that. Anyway, it's a story about the last time that he visited his ex-wife before she passed away. Uh, this will have you in tears, guys. Merle Haggard is easily one of, if not the greatest country music singer that ever lived. And though his life was far from perfect, he was never afraid to put those experiences into songs and to be authentic and real about struggles as he possibly could be. And that included the challenge that came along with multiple marriages. The Hag was married five times in total. He was married to his second wife, Bonnie Owens, from 1965 to 78. Of course, he also had a decades-long crush on the queen of country, Dolly Parton, which you can, uh, which you probably read about. Uh, but back in the 2012, Merle had a surprise appearance at the Country Music Hall of Fame and a musician for him where he spoke with the Tennessean about his marriage to Bonnie. Uh, she was also a musician and won the ACM uh, for Female Vocalist of the Year in 65. She married Merle that same year and started touring with him and helped take care of his kids from his previous marriage soon after. Merle said he was in a deep creative period during that time, too, and she encouraged him to keep going. I got in the heated period where I was writing pretty good, and it was right after she and I got married. If I even indicated that I was going to write, she was there with a pad and pen, and she didn't miss a thing, you know? He credits her for making some more some of his biggest hits, like Mama Tried and Working Man Blues, made it to radio. If it wasn't for Bonnie, he said those songs wouldn't even exist. There wouldn't have been no Mama Tried or Working Man Blues if it wasn't for her. She took those words down at the right time. I think in 68 and 69, we had a six BMI awards uh, that year, and she took down the songs, each one of them. She had took them down. One of my favorite Merle Haggard songs, Today I Started Loving You Again, was written for Bonnie after they'd been out on tour together and were able to reconnect as a couple, he said. Today I Started Loving You Again was written for her. Uh, we'd been on a long tour down in Texas. We'd been down there 90 days or something. And uh, we got a week off, and then we had to come back and do 45 more days. And we took this week off, and we flew home, and we were in L.A. airport. And I said, you know, we haven't had much time to say hello, talking to her. I said, today I started loving you again. I had time to start loving you again. And like this true businesswoman she was, she responded with, what a great idea for a song. He first included the beautiful track on his 68 record, The Legend of Bonnie and Clyde, and it also appeared on the track track list for his 1970 album, The Fight Inside of Me. Of course, the song became an instantly recognizable country classic, though it never peaked in the top 10 on the country charts. That was later covered by other legends like Waylon Jennings, Conway Twitty, Kenny Rogers, plenty of other artists over the years. Once Merle and Bonnie were back on the Texas tour after the week-long break, uh, Merle asked her to get him a hamburger. He wrote out the song on a paper bag as food came in that night. I'd written The Day I Started Loving You Again on his paper bag, tore it open, and wrote it on there. There was another verse that we never did use. When I get a royalty check, all the songs that I've written make up about half of the money. And Today I Started Loving You Again is the rest of the money, and I only get 12% of it. I'd written it for her, so I gave her half of it to begin with, and then we got our divorce, and she got the other half. But the most incredible part of the interview comes when Merle talks about the relationship years after their marriage ended. He said it took a divorce for them to really realize they were never meant to be married. Uh, but, they were, uh, but they were able to build a friendship that lasted for many years as a result. He added that they remained close all the way up to her death in 2006. I went to see her the last time at her home when she was staying. And she was several years in the Alzheimer's thing. She grabbed me by the arm. There were some other people with us. She said, I've got to take you down to my room. So I followed her down to the room, and she had this big slick of her and I up behind her bed. And you might want to grab your tissue before you hear this. Uh, and she looked at it and said, he's my favorite. I'm sorry, but I cannot even handle that. I don't, I think that's one of the, and she didn't identify him with the picture. Uh, I think that's one of the sweetest, most heartbreaking things I ever heard. And you have to listen to Merle tell the story himself because he gets choked up remembering uh, that beautiful moment. And you can catch that on YouTube as well. It's just, uh, I've been around Alzheimer's people and dementia and people with dementia and stuff. And it's just so sad. And then uh, for her to pull him down to her room and show her, join the big picture of the two of them and uh, not even know that was him. It's just sad. Anyway, I thought you guys would probably enjoy this. Um, 
And I appreciate you stopping by. I know I've been doing a lot of rock and roll, and that seems to be what everybody wants. But every now and then, I'm going to throw some country in, guys. That's just the way I roll. Uh, please don't forget about classic TV facts and trivia. There's some rock and roll over there. Remember WKRP in Cincinnati? Where are they now? Check that out. Please subscribe. Please like this video if you don't mind. You guys have a great day. God bless. I'm praying for you.